Thank you, Mr. President. With the consent of the body, I move for the consideration of PS Resolution 185. Any objection? Hearing none. Proposed Senate Resolution Number 185 is in order. Ask Secretary to read the title of the measure without prejudice to inserting into the records the entire text of the resolution. Secretary, please do so. Resolution extolling the heroism and virtues of World War II martyr Wenceslao Q. Vinsons on occasion of his 106th birth anniversary. I move that Senator Pang, uh, Francis Pangilinan be recognized to sponsor the measure. Mr. Any President. objection? Hearing none, Senator Pangilinan is recognized to sponsor PS Resolution Number 185. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you, colleagues. Thank you, Majority Leader. Um, Mr. President, uh, 106 years ago, last Thursday, September 28, uh, Wenceslao uh, Vincons was born in Indan, Camarines Norte. Uh, Wenceslao Vincens was a high school class valedictorian. He, was, uh, he took up law at the University of the Philippines and placed third in the bar examinations of 1933. Uh, Wenceslao Vincens was hailed as the father of student activism in the Philippines. While studying in the University of the Philippines, he was elected UP uh, Student Council President and he was also editor-in-chief of the Philippine Collegian. Along with Narciso Alegre and future Senator and Vice President Arturo Torrentino, he founded the Young Philippines Party, a political party of uh, youth leaders which advocated the grant of Philippine independence from American rule. At the age of 24, Mr. President, he was the youngest delegate to the 1934 Constitutional Convention. And he was instrumental in prescribing Filipino uh, then Tagalog is the official language of the Philippines. In 1940, Mr. President, he was elected youngest governor of Camarines Norte. And he also eventually became the province's representative to the National Assembly. His services as a legislator was interrupted by the Japanese invasion of the Philippines in 1941. Mr. President, during the war, he organized an armed resistance in the Bicol region against the invading Japanese army, commandeered all the rice warehouses in his provinces, ordered their confiscations, confiscation of explosives, and used the province's gold mines for use against the Japanese army. He led a raid against a troop of Japanese soldiers in Basudka, Marines Norte, and in May 1942, together with guerrilla forces, he successfully led the liberation of the provincial capital of Dai. Sometime, however, in between 1941 and 1942, uh, he was able to kill thousands together with his guerrilla unit of Japanese soldiers. And he became the most wanted man in the Bicol region. Mr. President, in, uh, eventually he was captured in July 8 of 1942 uh, together with his father. And despite being threatened with his death uh, by Commander Major Tsuneoka, Noburo, Wenceslao Vincens refused to pledge allegiance to his captors and pinpoint the location of Filipino and American guerrillas in the province and instead responded, and I quote, nothing can make me happier than to die for my country, Major. You will die too. On July 15, 1942, Mr. President, the Japanese bayoneted him to death after his refusal to collaborate. Shortly thereafter, the Japanese also executed his father, his wife, his sister, and two of his children. To honor his memory, Mr. President, uh, the home, his hometown of Indan was renamed Vincent's. And in the University of the Philippines, where I graduated, Mr. President, a number of uh, edifices and buildings are named after him, particularly the Student Activity Center. Uh, our Senate President is aware of this. The Student Activity Center houses the University of the Philippine Student Council as well as the Philippine Collegian. And this was called, uh, and the building was called, is called Wenceslao Vincent's or Vincent's Hall. Therefore, Mr. President, I appeal to our uh, colleagues to support this uh, resolution and to approve this resolution to remember 
celebrate and extol the heroism and virtues of World War II martyr, youth, and student leader Wenceslao Vincent, as a true paragon for the Filipino youth. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Pangilinan. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to adopt Senate Resolution 185, subject to style. Senator Gordon. Mr. President, I got beaten to the draw by, by younger Brad uh, by the name of uh, Senator Pangilinan. Senator Vincent has always been my hero. He was the youngest delegate to the Constitutional Convention of 1935, and I became the, national, the youngest delegate to the Constitutional Convention of 1971. Following into his footsteps, Mr. President, I've always advocated that he is one of the Fully, uh, the very, very sparsely recognized heroes of our country. In fact, I would even uh, posit that he is a real live hero that our country should really honor. Not only was he a hero in every sense of the word because he died for his country, it's not important to die for your country, but for what you stood. As a young man, Wenceslao Vincent was a leader par excellence. He was a student leader who debated with Marcos, who debated with Quezon. He, along with others, uh, posited Mafilindo, Malaysia, Philippines, and Indonesia. He proposed Bahasa as the national language because at that time we could not agree on the national language, whether it would be Tagalog, Hilagaynon, or Visaya, or whatever. He dared, Mr. President. He was there. Uh, and uh, when he dares, uh, it is important that he be studied by many uh, generations from, uh, from where he stood so that they would be able to understand the life that he led in our country. Uh, Mr. President, he became the, young, uh, the youngest delegate and later on congressman and later on governor. When the Japanese arrived, as my good colleague stated, he fought back the Japanese and recovered the province of Camarines Norte from the Japanese. And then, Japanese sent troops and tried to capture him. He could not be captured. Finally, when he got captured, there are all kinds of rumors and legend has it that he was betrayed by one of the top leaders of this country. I spoke with the uh, daughter-in-law of, uh, of uh, Wenceslao Vincent's who said he could not be identified because he had cropped his hair short and he was really very dark and it was somebody who came down and I'm not re ready to stand up because that is part of the legend of the man. When he was incarcerated, he would flip notes outside the cell. They were trying to make him, like many leaders at the time, collaborate with the enemy. After all, many of his confederates had already gone on to the other side and taken positions in the puppet government of the Japanese at that time. He refused, and he popped up messages and sent it out and said, fight on, Philippines. Eventually, when they could not convince him, he was, in, he was uh, finally taken one evening, and together with his family, his head was cut off, his family, his wife, some of his siblings, his father, his mother, even the maid were killed by the Japanese. And the tragic thing about it was that nobody ever bothered to find out where he was buried. So up to now, we don't know where he was buried. All we know is that this man was eliminated from the face of the earth by the Japanese conquerors at the time. Mr. President, as Senator Pagrin has stated, and this is not my first time to speak here in this chamber, on uh, some of the Vincent's. We have Wenceslao Vincent Hall, of which I was privileged to be a member of the Student Council of UP at the time. And so is the Senate President, so is uh, my, our colleague here. And we all know that uh, many people go in and out of that place without knowing who Wenceslao Vincent is. That is the paucity. That is the, 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 the sparseness of the information about this man. We dare call a building after him, and yet many of the young people and young women in this country don't even know who he is. And that is the problem, Mr. President. The message, I suppose, is to try and wake up the country and try to fill them, fill them and imbibe them with the spirit of self abnegation of selflessness, of courage under fire, of being able, like our heroes, make a decision and say, hey, we're overwhelmed by a mighty enemy. They have planes, they have cannons, 
and we only have the scopetas that were left to us by the, by the Americans. And yet, he refused. He refused to be overcome by the mighty conqueror. September 28th is Vincent's day. I tried to push it here in the Senate uh, to make it a special day in uh, the province. I would imagine that at some point in time, because there are too many other holidays, I think we should really identify him among the many heroes of National Heroes Day as a standout because he is of modern vintage. He doesn't wear the garb during the Spanish era of Filipinos who wanted to be westernized with the, you know, with the coat and the tails of Jose Rizal. Neither did he wear the sparse clothing of Lapu-Lapu, but he was one of us. The modern era of the Philippines under the Commonwealth, youngest delegate daring to speak against the people, the leaders of the time, on vital matters of the day. And so today, I just thought I'd stand up and I thank man, uh, uh, Senator Pangilinan for uh, his speech today. I'm glad that uh, he is remembered and I thought I'd lend my voice here as well. Uh, that has always been a personal commitment of mine. Uh, I need not point out that one of the contributions that I feel were very, very humble, I would have been able to build a bigger monument to him so that people will know in the university we put in a bust of Wenceslao Vincent's at the entrance of the university so that people would at least have a face. You see, sometimes we create faceless people out of our heroes. They are not faceless. They have families. They have commitments like us. And yet, sabi nga nila, no todos dormían en la noche de nuestros abuelos, an off-coated coat, which means there were those who kept vigil in the night of our forefathers. We celebrate Wenceslao Vincent's day to day. And as I speak on Wenceslao Vincent's, especially with what happened last night, and I dare say I would have wanted to do a privileged speech right now. I would probably do it tomorrow. We should remind ourselves of the greatness of people like Wenceslao Vincent, a legislator par excellence. But we should also remember that today is the birthday of Joker Arroyo. And Joker Arroyo passed away in San Francisco. No, I'm sorry, not the birthday, but it is the, the death anniversary. One year ago today, Joker Arroyo died quietly in San Francisco. And the family, at per Joker's request, did not even request or did not even accept an offer by the Senate to have honors given to him. In fact, he just, as they say, moved on into the great beyond, quietly. Of course, being a maverick, I threw a party for him at the Red Cross building, the new one. And I said, uh, in violation of uh, Fairly's wishes, Fairly is his wife, I, uh, invited them, and at that day, we were celebrating the gift of Joker, which we arranged with the Germans, a gift of a modern ambulance to the Philippine Red Cross. And he did this when he was no longer a senator. Joker was a great Filipino, a great guy, if you will. Can you imagine, during martial law, he was an Epsilonian, Marcos was an Epsilonian, Benigno Aquino was an Epsilonian, and that doesn't really mean anything because Epsilonians should not crow about it. They should do what the fraternity teaches them. Just is because you're an Epsilonian doesn't mean you're a great man. But Joker was one of the principal lawyers who spoke out, who argued many cases against the Marcos regime. So much so that I I'm told that his bufete, or his law office, was even burnt. And uh, Joker never ceased to do that. Of course, when they saw each other, they called each other brads. Same way Mr. Aquino and Mr. Marcos called each other brads. But the point here that I'm trying to say, Mr. President, is that he was a man who was a lawyer par excellence. And then when he became congressman and became senator, he stood up head above shoulders among many of us. He would stand quietly there and listen to the debate, sometimes with his eyes closed. But when he spoke up, everybody listened. I was not here, and I was not privileged to see him when he was the prosecutor on the case of President Estrada. 
everybody has to make decisions, and sometimes these are not easy decisions. After all, as I've always said, in the pyramid of this country, when you grow up and you are at the base of the pyramids, everybody are friends. And as you go tighter into the apex of the president, uh, the, 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 the leadership uh, corridor of this country, the corridor tightens up and you tend to bang shoulders or bang heads with your confederates who grew up with you. To Joker, it was not a matter of personality. It was a matter of principle. And he stood up, as he stood up with President Marcos. Certainly, President Estrada was a very likable man, but Joker had his principles, and he prosecuted Mr. Estrada at the time. But then, when, President, uh, when, the, when the new dispensation took over and he was senator here, you will recall that he was one of the three senators that stood up against the battling, the charge against the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Renato Corona, and he dared say, no, I'm not going to vote for his impeachment. You know, I was also chagrined at the time when I heard, you know, the previous administration say that they were not going to listen to the Supreme Court. Remember that President Gloria Macapagalaroy was leaving, and the Supreme Court allowed her, but for some reason or another, she was prevented. And by slate of hand, I suppose, they prevented Gloria Macapagalaroy from leaving. Now, that's her problem. But to me, the essence, as well as the joker, was the fact that you do not disobey the Supreme Court of the land. Because that is the thread that unites us. That is the last resort of this country. When the Supreme Court interprets the law, we follow. Joker is to this ground. All the way to the end, when he stood up, and together with a couple of other senators, including the late Miriam Defensor Santiago, they would know. And, not easy, but they did. But Joker was that type of a man. And when you look at Joker, he was always a thoughtful person, a man of great humor. I remember when I came in here one day, wearing a, a Coast Guard uniform, I was made an admiral in the auxiliary, and I had just gotten a medal and I was late because they had given me a ceremony, and I didn't have time to change. I didn't want to be late for the roll call. And Joker turned his shoulder chair around, just like my good friend Senator Soto just did. I suppose I got his attention. As Joker did, I got his attention as well. And when Joker turned around, he said, he squinted the only way Joker could. And as he squinted, he said, Mr. President, there's somebody here whom I don't hardly recognize. You know, I hardly recognize. And I said, it looks like Senator Gordon. And he's in a military uniform. And he seems to be out of uniform, Mr. President. And Mr. President, we have rules here in the Senate. that when you come here, you either wear a barong or a suit. And I said, Mr. President, uh, I take it in great humor that my brad is here. But I said, Mr. President, the one who is not in uniform is a distinguished gentleman from Bicol. Because Mr. And I said, no, I'm in uniform. I'm wearing a barong. And I said, Mr. President, that is not the issue. He is not in full uniform. The gentleman is not wearing socks. <laughs> and everybody had a big laugh at that time. And Joker, like the man he was, we had a lot of laughs here. Uh, there were many times, I'm sure you know about the Wednesday Club with Kiko Wangirinan and Manny Vigar and Ralph Recto, and they would have good meetings. I had the privilege of joining them there at the, at the Hyatt, no? At the Hyatt. Uh, later on, they moved out of there. When I say lunches, where they would meet and talk about the issues of the time. But let me just say that when you look at, uh, uh, at when he had gone already from the Senate, one day he called me and said, let's have dinner. And he invited me to be with him at that time and introduced to me an old family friend of his from Germany. The name is Joseph Lederer. Joker had solicited on behalf of the Philippine Red Cross at my prodding an ambulance from Yosef, a Mercedes Benz, no less. Prior to that, he had also facilitated the donation of a plane load of relief goods for disaster victims for Hayan. And this is Joker out of office already. And one of the best gifts I ever had in my life. And he would kid me about the fact that, that the fact that I, he would tell me, you have your own corporation. I said, what corporation? He said, the Red Cross is your corporation. I said, no, it, it belongs to the whole world. And he gave me a coin that is treasured that very few people have anymore. 
It was a 25th anniversary coin of the Philippine Red Cross since 1947. So Joker Arroyo was very thoughtful, was always mindful of the, uh, you know, the advocacies of his friends. He was a great friend. He was a teacher to many of us. And he was a devoted husband to Feli, whom he not only doted on and loved his wife, but with whom he shared many intellectual and substantial exchanges herself, also being a lawyer. He's a great father who raised three accomplished daughters. I used to kid him, it takes a man to make another man. One, a TOIM awardee for science. The next, a fantastic and loving homemaker and mother. And the younger Joker, lady called Joker, a bemedaled equestrian who has proudly and successfully represented the Philippines in countless international competitions. And in fact, I think she graduated from Yale. He was an astute lawyer who brought his intelligence and acumen to the halls of the House of Representatives from the Senate. He brought quality debate and a lot of humor and discussion to our midst. Patiently endured the occasional stubborn or incorrigible colleague without disrespecting them. And that's where he really shines. There was no disrespect when he spoke. There were no barbed comments about one another, but rather wry remarks that he could dish out or not around. And let me just say, Mr. President, he still emerged immensely successful despite roadblocks put on his way. I'm sure he was frustrated. He was the lawyer of Benigno Aquino, but later on he was the executive secretary. But for some reason, they had a quarrel. I don't know if it's a quarrel or a misunderstanding. I remember when the bill on creating a, a district in Rizal happened, former president Benigno Aquino III refused to accept it. And I spoke to him and I said, this is a man who uh, worked for your father and mother. You should give him that break. And of course, no, no, he refused, but then we got it passed. And he never gloated about it. He never talked about it. He won, but he never gloated. He fought for what he believed in and was never called by power or threats or opposition. He was uncompromising in his integrity and was an honorable gentleman throughout. We call each other here the gentleman from Aurora, the gentleman from San Juan, or the gentleman from Bulacan, or the gentleman from Iloilo. And we all must act the part in the tradition perhaps of Vincent's, or for that matter, Joker Arroyo. He was uncompromising in his integrity, M many times misunderstood as well, but then that is what life is all about. Sometimes you take positions and people don't understand you. But the real man is the man who, stood, who stands by his principles. Win or lose, no, it's not the school we choose, <laughs> as the Ateneo him goes, and the USD graduate here is uh, kidding me about it, <laughs> so, although USD is a Dominican school. Uh, uh, but Joker, uh, yes, he came from the Ateneo as well, but that doesn't mean anything again. We're not elitist, but let me just say that uh, he was uncompromising in his integrity and was an honorable gentleman throughout. And so today, let us remember Joker, a great patriot, from Bicol, a freedom fighter, a champion of democracy, a friend, a brother, a colleague in the Senate. May his memory be an example to us who are left here to do the job of doing right by our people against all odds and at any cost. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Majority Leader. Mr. President, um, the previous question was the approval of uh, Senate Resolution 185. Now, may I withdraw my motion first? I withdraw the motion, Mr. President. Any objection? The motion is withdrawn. I move that the manifestation of Senator Gordon be referred to the Committee on Rules for a proper resolution tomorrow for Senator Joker Arroyo, Mr. President. All right. So referred. Thank you. Now I move to adopt Senate Resolution 185, Mr. President, on uh, uh, former Senator Winsons uh, and making Senator Gordon a co-author and co-sponsor of the measure, Mr. President. All right. Any objection? Thank you, Mr. President.